This video will demonstrate how to design wood voltage shear connections in VA Connect. Let's get started. In this example, we will design a wood to wood connection as shown in the detail. The side member is loaded with three kips of shear dead load and with four kips of axial tension wind load. VA Connect checks wood bolted shear connections for the various yield modes in addition to checking the limit states of net section tension, row tearout, and group tearout for both the main and side members according to the American Wood Council National Design Specification for Wood Construction. Starting out in VA Connect, we see a side member that is connected to a main member with a single fastener. In the Modify tab of the Project Manager, we can specify the moisture and temperature conditions. For this example, we'll assume that the moisture at fabrication and in service both have dry service conditions. For the temperature range, we will assume that this connection won't experience sustained exposure to elevated temperatures, so we will leave T less than or equal to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The wet service factor CM and the temperature factor CT are both set to calculate, meaning that VA Connect will automatically calculate these factors. We have the option to set the factors to ignore which causes a value of 1.0 to be used for the factor or to override the factor to enter a custom value. Under the C factors section, we will leave the group action factor CG, the geometry factor C delta, and the size factor CF set to calculate, and we will leave the rest of the factors set to ignore. Clicking on the main member, let's choose a standard dressed 4x12 member from the shape database and leave the material set to Douglas for large number 2 which we see has a specific gravity of 0.5. Let's assume that the connection is at the top of the main member, so we will set the start distance to something large like 36 inches and specify 6 inches for the end distance. For the side member, let's assume that we have a rough sawn 2x10 and we will set the material to visually graded southern pine, select structural for a 10 inch deep member. For this material, we see the specific gravity is 0.55. Let's set the start distance to half the width of the main member and leave the end distance at 24 inches. Note, when only a single fastener is used in the connection, the side member can be set to any orientation with respect to the main member, such as negative 40 degrees, 200 degrees, 30 degrees, etc. When a group of fasteners are used, the side member must either be parallel or perpendicular to the main member. In our example, we will leave theta set to zero to have the side member perpendicular to the main member. In order to have a connection be at the top of the column, let's adjust the end distance of the main member and set it equal to the depth of the side member divided by two. Clicking on the fastener shows the parameters for the bolt group. The in double shear parameter can be set to yes and a second side member will appear in the side view. For our example, let's assume we have one side member. Now let's select a half inch diameter fastener to start out and we will leave the bending yield strength set to 45 KSI. Let's use two rows spaced at two inches and three columns spaced at three inches. With the parameter set for the main member, the side member, and the fastener group, we can look at the detailing checks and see that they are OK. Now let's switch to the load view and enter the load on the connection. Hovering over the axial load, we see the tooltip appear that says the axial load is applied to the side member in its local coordinates where tension equals positive. We see a similar note when we hover over the shear force. For this connection, let's apply the shear load to the side member in the dead load service case and apply axial tension load to the connection in the wind load service case. With the service loads defined, we can go to the load case manager and select which building code we want to use for the load combinations. We see that there are four load combinations that are automatically generated, and we see the four effective equations, dead load, dead load plus 0.6 wind load, dead load plus 0.45 wind load, and 0.6 dead load plus 0.6 wind load. The project static shows that a couple of the limit states are failing. Yield mode 3 for the side member and yield mode 4. Clicking on any of the limit states produces a detailed report. The report for the yield mode 4 
shows that the controlling load combination is the dead load. Since the demand exceeds the capacity, the unity value exceeds 1.0 and the limit state fails. Note, while the demand for the dead plus 0.6 wind load combination will be larger for this limit state, the capacity will also be larger since the duration factor will be 1.6 instead of 0.9. Therefore, the dead load only combination controls. The C factor details show that CG is just below 1 and that the rest of the factors are equal to 1. Therefore, the C total factor, which are all of the C factors combined, is just below 0.9. The equation in the report shows that the reference lateral design value, z, is a function of the fastener diameter squared. Therefore, let's increase the fastener diameter from a half inch to five eighths of an inch to see if this causes the limit state to pass. Making this change, now the yield mode four passes. However, yield mode three for the side member still fails, and we see that the yield mode one for the side member, which was previously passing, now fails. Clicking on this limit state, the C factor's details show a C delta of 0.8. Since the reference lateral design value Z is only directly proportional to the diameter of the bolt, increasing the diameter did not increase Z enough to compensate for the lower C delta value, and the capacity of this limit state decreased. Going to the report, let's look at the geometry factor report and see what is causing C delta to be less than 1. Going down the list, we see that for the dead load only case, the side member is loaded perpendicular to grain and the main member is loaded parallel to grain. The actual bolt spacing is 2 inches, while the minimum bolt spacing for a C delta of 1.0 is 2.5 inches. Therefore, the C delta for the spacing between the bolts for the side member and the main member is 0.8. For perpendicular to grain loading of the side member, the figure shows that E is the dimension for the spacing between bolts. Going back to the model view, we can increase the dimension from 2 inches to 2.5 two inches, which should cause C delta for the dead load only case to increase to 1, and now all of the limit states pass. The detailing check has a warning status, and clicking on the detailing check, the report shows two warnings. The bottom warning says, calculation of the NDS adjustment factors CG and C delta is based on the assumption that the members are loaded either parallel or perpendicular to grain. Additional information on this assumption can be found in the report tables and the help file. Switching back to the report view, the geometry factor report elaborates on the parallel and perpendicular to grain assumption. The top right section of the report states that when the result load is oriented between negative 45 degrees and positive 45 degrees to the member, the loading is assumed to be parallel to grain. Otherwise, loading is assumed to be perpendicular to grain. For load key 0, which is the dead load only load combination, we see that the main member is loaded parallel to grain and the side member is loaded perpendicular to grain. For load key 1, which is the dead load plus 0.6 wind load combination, the main member is still assumed to be loaded parallel to grain and the side member is still assumed to be loaded perpendicular to grain. This is the case since the 3 kip dead load is larger than 0.6 times the 4 kip wind load making alpha less than 45 degrees for the main member and more than 45 degrees for the side member. For load key 3, which is the 0.6 dead load plus 0.6 wind load combination, the main member is now assumed to be loaded perpendicular to grain, while the side member is assumed to be loaded parallel to grain. This is the case since 0.6 times 3 kips dead load is smaller than 0.6 times 4 kips wind load, making alpha greater than 45 degrees for the main member and less than 45 degrees for the side member. For this load case, the C delta is 0.6 instead of being 1.0 as it is for the other load cases. Note, in VA Connect, we can always override the values for the C factors and specify our own values for the factors if needed. Now let's go back to the detailing checks to see what the other warning says. This warning states, the influence of the shear is not considered when calculating the net section tension, the row tearout, and the group tearout capacities. Selecting group tearout for the side member, we see that the controlling load combination is 0.6 dead plus 0.6 wind. 
The force details show that the resultant load vector is 2.4 in the x direction, which is the horizontal direction, and negative 1.8 in the y direction, which is the vertical direction. Since the influence of shear is not considered for the group tear out capacity, the demand is only the load that puts the side member in tension, which is the 2.4 kips. Now with all of the limit states passing, and having reviewed the warnings for the detailing checks, we can switch to the report view to easily create a report to document our work. A concise design summary is automatically generated, showing the unity values for each limit state. We can add detailed reports showing calculations for each limit state and adjustment factor reports to document how the adjustment factors were calculated. Also, we can add summary tables for each limit to the report. In just a few minutes, we have used VA Connect to create an optimal design for a wood bolted shear connection and to produce a report to document our work. To try VA Connect for yourself, head over to our website and download the free trial.